The Curate's Egg, Ashraf Ali Tanvi, Part 16. Theobandi Pederasti, The Beardless Simulacrum, Part 2. Baraka. Then he asked the Khalifa, what is the age of this child? He said, his age is 13 years. So now that the groundwork has been laid for this topic and I've shown you where I'm taking my sources, um, I just want to uh, illustrate a few things here. This YouTube clip that's freely available uh, describes probably one of the most prolific paedophiles in British history, uh, Jimmy Savile, uh, taking a young girl to uh, Prince Philip. This is exactly the scenario that Taki Osman is describing in regards to Ashraf Ali Thanvi. Young children are taken to him and in this instance the child and the father of the child is rejected and um, a reason is given that the child is um, uh, 12 to 13 years old. Now I don't want to read anything into this other than what it actually says itself but the point that I'm trying to illustrate is people that predate on young children usually are not those who are pariahs or outside of social, official, uh, religious, uh, governmental, educational, uh, health spheres. They are well entrenched within these fields and these spheres and this is where they operate. The case that I mentioned of um, uh, um, uh, David uh, Norman was the Delta Project and here on the screen you have examples of the meticulous record he kept of the children that he predated on and this is in America so you've got Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, San Diego stretching all the way across America of the children that he had access to and that he had predated on that was the Delta Project these things um, were precursors to the scandals that you see today the Harvey Weinstein scandal uh, the paedophile island of uh, Epstein these things all had precursors and they're not something that are limited to uh, the Obandis or the Arab Muslim world it's something that cuts across all cultures um, if anything I would say the Western uh, system and the Western uh, approach to these topics is a lot more uh, candid and open and there is accountability people can trace these these um, uh, documents they can trace these instances and describe what's happened whereas in the Arab Islamic uh, Diobandi world uh, these things happen under the cover and it's only people like the Glecklin Rubishov channel that exposes them and I fully fully expect many people to totally reject everything I'm saying because they don't want to see the truth. Anyway, here we have another example, and this is quite shameful because what Ashraf Ali Thanvi does is he tries to seek uh, precedent in religious figures for his behavior. It says, in another statement, Thanvi shed more light on the figure of the beardless lad and the beautiful woman. He addressed these two objects of desire in terms of visual and sonic pleasure. So, he is de deriving a visual and sonic pleasure from young boys. This is his quote. It is indecent to hear melodious notes sung by a woman who is not one's kin or by young lads who incite desire in one. So this is from the horse's mouth literally. Young lads incite desire or incited desire in Thanvi and uh, his followers, at least the ones that wrote to him and told him that. We also re uh, read of the perceived danger from the face of beardless men whose presence disrupts the heterosexual management of desire. Thanvi cited the example of the famed Muslim jurist Abu Hanifa. So here, this uh, paraphilia, which is what it is according to the DSM, this paraphilia is sought to be justified by a jurist called Abu Hanifa. Supposedly, and it is supposedly, so this has to be proven if this actually happened, Abu Hanifa instructed one of his young students, namely Muhammad Hassan al-Shaybani, to sit behind him away from his immediate field of vision so that Abu Hanifa could avoid seeing Shaybani's beardless face. It, after narrating this didactic vignette to his disciples, Thanvi asked them rhetorically, 
If the Grand Imam Abu Hanifa exercised such great caution, then who today can continue to trust himself in refraining from pleasure derived from gazing at young men? This was in Fanvi's work, Al Ilm wal Ulama, page 139 and 140. That's from the horse's mouth himself. Then this is Professor Mian's analysis. The beardless face of yet ya- la- ya- lads were more, most likely perceived as threatening because they introduced into the visual spect- spectacle of Muslim piety the ambiguous sign of desire. The beardless face of a young man was troubling because it invited the gaze away from the adoration of the divine. In any case, um, not to comment um, further than what's actually been stated, Thanvi here and uh, some of his disciples clearly display a desire for young beardless men. Stay tuned for many more parts and um, many more analyses of these paraphilias and other topics.